Hey guys, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. This is the fifth uh, pod sessions, and as many of you know, this is, by the way, if you've been wondering why I've been throwing up my entire hand uh, in every photo, <laughs> that is because it represents the number five, which is my favorite number. If you haven't seen the video of the Jets jersey my mom made for me, uh, literally Google Gary V, mom, Jets jersey. You have to watch this video. Number five has been my favorite number since I turned five and decided my favorite number was gonna be my age. That is the fun fact. <laughs> Starting pod sessions. I'm very excited about this pod session. Um, and uh, and uh, what I really wanna do first and foremost is go around uh, the room and give everybody who's listening uh, a little bit of your, uh, uh, who you are and what you do and maybe five sec- like the five second version of how you got there and then we'll go into it deeper. So. Let's start to ladies first right over here. <laughs> well, hello everybody. My name is Arabella S. Ruby and I'm an actress and a CEO of my own company. Uh, I got my LLC, uh, 2017 January Ruby Red Enterprise. And yeah, it's been popping ever since. <laughs> so where are you from? I'm from Augusta, Georgia. Very nice, yes. born and raised? No, I was actually born in England. Oh, okay. Yes, my mom was in the army for a while, but I'm actually British and Jamaican, so. Very cool. Yeah. So, your your childhood in Georgia. Yes, majority the of the masters it is in would Georgia. come in for yes. a couple weeks. All of that, <laughs> all of that. that. Home of the seven oh six. Yes, big up yes. the seven oh six. Yes. And so you grew there, and and so you live here now. I live in uh, New Jersey, and I'm actually what training uh, Patterson. Love it. Mm-hmm. I know it well. And I am training to become uh, one of the best actresses in the world in New York City. There you go. Jeez. There we go. Keep it, keep it <laughs> lack of Fun ambition. Fact, I, I lived in Augusta, Georgia from yeah? six to seven. We just found that out. Yes, uh, Or we she did. just found that out. We're, yes. we're just chatting. I love that my Augusta. Fun fact. Fact. Gabe, very yeah. nice for you jumping in before being called on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Rich. Get along. Rich, let's fire away. We'll get back. To uh, great to be here. My name is Rich Roll. I am a recovering attorney. Attorney turned uh, ultra endurance athlete, uh, host podcast that I've been doing since 2012. Very successfully. Um, author, thank you. Uh, Successful in that as yeah, well. Thank you very much. Uh, contributed to crushing it, which I was very honored to do. And in the biggest way uh, for everybody in a couple weeks, what do we have the official date? Uh, no, I don't want to get you wrong. It's the third mm. or the eighth. It's the third and or the eighth. Or the eighth. Good. The eighth. I understand. Mm. Friends, uh, the audiobook is finally coming August third or. August 8th, April. Uh, excuse me, April 3rd or <laughs> April 8th, uh, and Rich did me a real mitzvah. He read, the st- uh, for some of you that have read it, there's stories of other people mm-hmm. who read Crush It and then went on their way to, and are featured in Crushing It, and Rich is one of those people in mm-hmm. the book uh, who's affected by Crush It and went on to Crushing It, but he, he actually is the voice behind the stories of the audiobook. I read most of it, uh, and then Amy, right, is the, uh, is the other voice, is that right, Amy? Tyler, pay attention. Amy did the other voices, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. You're a very big part of crushing it, which is April 3rd. actually crushing it. April third. Yeah. yeah. April third. It's like it's two seconds home. away. There it is. <laughs> April third. Yeah. Very the, excited about the uh, the feedback that I've gotten from being in the book has been huge. Actually, let's you, actually I'll go back to it. All um, right, Rich, thrilled you're here. You live in the West Coast, here. Yep. so you're here to do some business. I'm mm-hmm. glad you stopped by the pod sessions. Gabe, what's up, my man? How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? Good. Who are you? Gabriel Anderson. Uh, I actually run our Vayner Beta business, which is our small mid-market business. Been working alongside of Gary for five and a half, almost six years now. Uh, Also from LA originally. Mm -hmm. He pulled me out of my startup uh, from uh, Santa Monica. Uh, convinced me that what I was doing was dog shit and <laughs> it'd be a lot better if I if I uh, come execute on a much bigger platform and hasn't been wrong. Uh, and I really appreciate Gabe because Antonio Cromartie, former star football player in New York Jet, was supposed to be here, but he's living the football player life, fucking bailed. <laughs> Crow, I'm gonna find you, but I can't wait to have you on. And so I literally was like, well, Gabe's fucking super interesting and entertaining, and I don't know, there he is, so let's have him on the show. Actually, we're gonna start, we're going backwards. Gabe, yeah. to make this a show, yeah. uh, uh, and, I, what, and honestly, why you're on, because I know you won't be scared, yeah. tell us a story that I don't even know about me from your five and a half, a f- tell me a story, Holy when, when you go out to dinner, yeah, yeah, and yeah. especially now that I'm like on the verge of becoming the yep. most famous person on earth, yep. you're gonna have to deal with this more often, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have to deal with 
you know, with you're gonna go out with your lovely girl and you're gonna have dinner and friends are like, oh, you work for that guy? Tell me some story. What's a good story that you can go to? Give me a give me a story that I don't even know, good or bad. Like just a, give me a funny story, something. And you know, you know my audience. Yeah, 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 what's yeah. maybe a less what, or yeah. or something to to be even more specific? Given this audience, what's a story? You know, I find you to be very entrepreneurial. You have sure. your own story. You've been here for a while. You're you're crushing now with Vayner Beta. We you were listen for this audience. Yeah. You are the reason that I finally feel confident that we're about to help businesses mm. that really want to work with me. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. SMBs, the startups, the entrepreneurs. Um, but what's a good story of something you got taught that was totally different than the way you thought about things, or just a funny story, or like give us a story. Yeah, I, so the one that immediately comes to mind is uh, and in story form, not Gary taught me to be patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> the the, um, uh, the the story that come, immediately comes to mind is. Um, I don't think you know the full story of why I came out to New York in the first place. So I, I had a startup, we were doing um, dog, uh, shit. dog shit, back office uh, transaction okay. real estate management for, for realtors. And um, and I see, so the way that I, I found out about um, uh, the business growing, the intermediate growing, Gary sends out a tweet late one night, I think, put, posted on Facebook as well. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, VaynerMedia is growing, we're looking for talented folks, you know, and I had followed him on YouTube for about two, three years up until that point. And so I cold emailed him, uh, sent him off a bunch of spreadsheets. It was a, a super long email. Now knowing him now, I, I know there's no fucking way he read that email. <laughs> 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 Nate, Nate, who was his assistant back in the days, uh, now is hustling to do his own thing, probably read through the whole email. Nate was the admin. Nate was the admin back, back, back then, yeah. <laughs> Um, I sent him this really long email with Excel spreadsheets and the whole thing. I made this comment about, do I have to be a Jets fan? I, just, I, I still have it in my inbox. It's the corniest thing. Um, but uh, this was 11.30 at night on the West Coast, so 1.30 in the morning in New York. Gary emails me within five minutes, and he's like, yep, I'm interested. Let's chat. You know, I want you to meet this guy, Vikash, on my team. You know, talk with him, start with him. And so, wasn't it two thirty in the morning? If it was eleven thirty your time, eleven thirty something. Yeah, two thirty. Yeah, two thirty a.m. Just wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Nate, good call. real quick, good I know call. you're busy. Uh, yeah, Nate, <laughs> do you do you remember the email? Do you do you think 100%. Nate got his job? Do you think Gabe works here only because of you? Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah, no, really, percent. Yeah. Gabriel Anderson. Yeah. yeah. What happened? You saw it. I was going to get your sweater at a hotel. <laughs> this is a, this is a <laughs> Go ahead. You left, you left your sweater at a hotel. I was going to get it. Okay. You sent out some tweet. I got 60 emails. Oh. <laughs> Gabe was like one of the five I responded to. And yeah. it was good. We've all been on the other side of that transaction now, which is why it's so funny. Right, because when I'm like, Vader Beta is here. Yeah. If you want to spend $20,000 a month, Gabe is going to change your and life. The and the onslaught of inbound yeah. that comes in. And then it's, it's just Thank trying to pick the, the, seat right. out of the, the needle out of the haystack. Yeah. So Nate but, got you so, a job. So, so basically, I, I hopped on the, uh, a Skype interview with uh, this guy Vikash back in the day. It's not important. Uh, Wait, I lied. Dude. I lied to Vikash. I told Vikash I was going to be in New York on business. Why don't I just stop by the office, meet Gary, do the whole thing? You weren't going to be on so business. So what? But the but you my for a job. my I wasn't coming for a job. Here, so here's the thing that I don't think you know. In the back of my head, I thought, well, Gary's kind of big in startups and and raising, and like maybe I can raise some money from him. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to slide he just, in there. He just needs to see like what we've been doing for the last couple of years and how we've been growing and scaling. And it was it was a whole mm-hmm. thing. I, I go into the office at like, uh, it was like at noon. I'd just gotten into New York the night before, like 1 a.m. I was on the red eye or whatever. And uh, I'm completely bloodshot and I sit down and I got this whole thing in my head that I'm, I'm ready to start talking with him about. And the first thing he asked me is, is uh, uh, tell me about your family. Like, tell me about your dad. <laughs> completely throws me off. I've, I had no clue that was coming. Yeah. And uh, and just, you, you talked to me about the future, what VaynerMedia was, what you were building, what it was gonna look like in the next three to four years as all these large CMOs started really figuring out what social was and not just this, this game gamified thing and you know having been here now I know that that it was true but uh but yeah that was my my whole thing was I think I can raise money from Gary and uh and then he gives me a job offer on the spot and I was like oh shit on the spot that's true (laughs) it was a much better company back then now there's like process and Alex Klein and Green Man and like I don't know what the fuck this company's doing the way it was better was weird guy Gabe walks in his dad's like jazz or something he told me some story about high school or college where they were doing something that felt entrepreneurial I'm like, I like his laugh. I'm like, fuck it. You want a job, bro? Mm-hmm. That's literally how it went down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I don't think you knew the All full right. thing. Yeah. Let, now let's go to the part that I always start the show with. We'll go back to the ladies. Uh, what are you obsessed with right now? And this can be like your sweater, this show on Netflix, uh, the way your wigs that you wear. Like, what do you, like, it doesn't have to be like world peace, like, very weird and narrow. 
or just or just actually what are you up you know this new waffle place this new friend i want this to be quite broad and interesting i'm always fascinated by what somebody's obsessed with right now what are you obsessed with right now currently my obsession is youtube and vegan lifestyle to okay, be honest keep going. You're um, in the right place. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's so funny. It's like the older I get, the more sensitive my body becomes to like everything in life. So I was a uh, a pescatarian for a while, and then all of a sudden I was a vegetarian, and then I was doing a lot, a lot of research on YouTube about Dr. CB and his teachings and all of that, and how more healthy it is to be alkaline and all that. And I was like, you know what? Let me just change up my whole eating to when did this start Irma? like maybe three weeks ago good for you <laughs> three weeks ago good so luck. yeah so like every day i'm researching on youtube about vegan lifestyle we well, got the right and you don't know who i am <laughs> not wow. she's only rich she's <laughs> three, three, weeks weeks three, three weeks in yeah three weeks i mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it's gonna take her at least another seven we based on the way we... based on the way i see you executing your content it's gonna take her another seven and a half weeks i'm still butthurt <laughs> <Gary. laughs> i'm still butthurt i respect it man <laughs> Are you kidding me? I go to like conferences every day, and I'm like, what? Like, I meet people every day, and I'm like, what do you do? They're like, oh, I work in a social media agency. I'm like, cool. I'm Gary Vaynerchuk. They're like, cool. What do you do? I'm like, oh. I'm like, this shit is hard out here. It is hard out here. Oh. Don't feel sad, Rich. So that's what you're obsessed with currently. Yes. Love it. Yeah. On the macro, the vegan lifestyle thing is my obsession. I've been doing it for 11 years. Rich, don't so we can talk. Yeah, you'll later. do that off, off pod off, sessions yeah, off. here officially. So right for now, you personally, right, right now, now a like a new things. pair of shoes. Right. Like in the, micro, yeah, in the micro, yeah, in the micro. No, only in the micro. Obsessed with Will Smith on Instagram. Let's oh, talk about yeah. it. Oh, let's oh talk my about god! Yeah, yep. incredible yep. what he's doing, and yeah. it's so he's cool just being authentic to see a guy like that. A list. A list. Not just dip his toe into social media, but like completely Brother, embrace it. This is the game. Yeah. Drake, his whole body. Drake, oh my god! And last night on Twitch, Will vlogging and being on Instagram. It's over. People don't mm. get it. It went yeah. upside down. Mm. It's yeah. over. Yeah. Mm. Like it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be next. Mm. Like who's who's paying attention let to me, Will Smith. Let me save you time. In that arena. Somebody like The Rock or Kevin Hart or this and that. Other people that are A's that get mm. the, what the fuck's actually happening. But it's gonna be like here's the, the more interesting. Part. There. Yeah, but I mean, not, he, what Will's doing is acting more like somebody who's coming from the bottom. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you like it. Mm -hmm. Will's acting like the way we all act, yeah. like yeah. starting from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's interesting about Will. Like he's authentic. Like Juju Smith. Like he's doing a lot. Like when you feel it coming from the bottom, from when somebody's at the top, that's the yeah. the brain twist. You get an A-list couple right now in Hollywood to actually start vlogging on. YouTube, the way the family vlogs do it, it will batshit explode the whole world. Mm -hmm. If you Give me any couple right now that's on People happen. Magazine or Us Weekly, yeah. any of them, right? Yeah. Uh, fucking Blake and fucking uh, Gwen Stefani. If they actually started vlogging on YouTube mm -hmm. the way the family vloggers that are crushing it do it, mm -hmm. like for real, for real, the internet would explode. Mm -hmm. The same way it did last night when Drake went and fucking into Twitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what happens, but here's the more interesting part. It's over. In my brain, in the same way that I, what I told Gabe you know, five and a half years ago, it played out, in my brain, that's the only thing that exists. For me, I'm not even mm -hmm. that curious of who's next. For me, because it's default, it's going to be everyone, because it's the cost of entry of being relevant in our society in a decade. Yeah, yeah. but not everyone is gonna be as talented as Will is. Well, that's right. In that regard. But there'll be a lot of fucking yeah. people that are talented enough. <laughs> because just vlogging your life yeah. is documenting, yeah. not creating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the micro. On the macro, yep. uh, I think what's really cool that's happening right now is seeing young people uh, socially activated. Uh, Yesterday you know, was bonkers. Ooh, yeah, yeah like bonkers. It's yeah. incredible what is happening right now. But that's these what, kids that's who what are we need. raised with these tools, yeah. who are putting them into motion in a way that adults don't understand, cool. and love shifting yeah. not just culture but the political yeah. conversation. Yeah, it's really and great. It's and also now, the now these fuckers better vote. <clears throat> yeah, right. Like to me, I'm like you fucking fuckers. Like get, marching out of school is fucking fun. You miss school, <laughs> right? Being a keyboard warrior on Twitter and roasting some politician, fun. You better get your ass out there. You wanna really fucking fuck shit up? Yeah. Like yeah. fucking, if you're turning 18 yeah. before November, yeah. like fucking go. Mm -hmm. Like don't be like, like don't pick fucking Twitch over registering. Yeah, right. Like get your shit together. That, that's, I'm dying to see what happens 18 to 22 mm -hmm. this November, cause that's how, that's the game. Mm -hmm. This is how I think about social media. Like you could be watching my content or listening to your podcast or watching Will Smith, but if you're not doing it for yourself, you're getting nothing out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could be you could be marching and making a sign mm -hmm. and roasting somebody on Twitter, but if you don't fucking vote, 
You fucking suck. <laughs> Kid. Correct. Cool. Gabe, what are you obsessed with? Um, tracking my biomarkers. It's become a, a recent obsession. I don't even know what a biomarker is. Start, Sounds like some health shit. Please so, elaborate. So I did, I did my uh, I did my 23 me uh, last year, ah. and then I married that with my microbiome, and uh, and then I use this company called Wellness FX. They so when are you drops. dying? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm gonna live forever. I yeah. feel like I might too. Yeah, I think it's very plausible. That's why I'm recording everything. <laughs> That's good. I'm gonna be a hologram. Generally. No, it's cool. I, so I so I've customized my vitamin and supplement intake based on uh, my blood draws. I, I mean, my energy levels are super high. What about great. your stretching ability? Because you got exposed in your stretching. Yeah, you, you set me up. By the way, I by just the way, want, I, on the record, monster. I want I want all of your I want all, your entire community to know that you set me up. <laughs> Let me t- <laughs> let's talk about this. Gabe's like, hey, we should work out together because he's a beast. Like, you yeah. know, he's strong and yeah. everything. Like, if you looked at his fucking legs, like it's there, right? <laughs> he's got that ass that like. Makes you know we can do shit. So, so he's like, we need so to. He's like, yeah, let's work out. We need to spend more time together. So let's work out at my gym. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's throw some weight, man. Let's no, no, do this. I only reacted to him being like, yo, because yeah. him and Willie, they think they're tough, and they're like, yeah. So I was like, yeah, yeah, we should work out. Let's yeah, spend some time. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was gonna be a stretch day. <laughs> Tyler, you were a disaster in the stretch day. <laughs> Guys, for everybody looking at home, if I think somebody can rival, could do more. Tyler, I think, is in the same realm as me, but Gabe, I knew, could lift more and do more. Yeah. So my plan well, always is, let's stretch. This is where you beat me by one. Did you beat me by one? Uh, yeah. Thank God that you can't beat me now. <laughs> yes, it's true, like two Januarys ago in bench, you beat me by one, but now I'll destroy you. Um, I've progressed. Uh, but stretching is how I kill everybody. Mm-hmm. Gabe yeah. came in, and like the first part is I'll do it, and I know where I was two years ago, where which was nowhere. So you know, you see somebody stretching, I'm doing Spider-Mans and these couple of things, and he's, yeah. so he's looking like, yeah, okay, whatever, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> People are not, dudes. I got you, murdered. Yeah, yeah you were you, so not uh, flexible. What's your trainer's Jordan. Name again? Jordan. Yeah, Jordan had me in all kinds of positions that I just was not ready for. Uh, I should. I got my spandex on. I got. My, I'm like ready to go. I've got my my uh, weightlifting shoes on. I'm ready to put up some real big. Rich, weight. let's talk about your brand. What's been <laughs> happening? I think you know. For me. I think the podcast platform really took you to the next level. You, yeah. along with Lewis House and, and Pat Flynn and JLD, there was a group of people that I think about that weren't me and Tim, that weren't me and Tony Robbins, that were like the next tier below. This was your land grab. Mm-hmm. When did you start your podcast? Started the podcast in the in late 2012. Perfect, exactly and just to my like, point. Yeah, point to like paint Please. a picture of what it was like back then. I mean, it was still, you know, it wasn't cool to have a podcast. That's then. exactly it was right. Super wonky. You still had to download them from your desktop and bump them to your MP3 player. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it wasn't like I was an early adopter. It had been around since like 2006 or something. Oh, like I remember that. the but first wave, but you were part of the early could, part of yeah, the next wave. You could, you could, you could like do a land grab at that point. Uh, That's and, exactly right. And establish yourself. Did, when did mm-hmm. Apple's top 100 chart come out? Was it there already when you yeah, started? Yeah, it was there. It was there already. And, but, and how were you able to hit it or no? Oh yeah, right away. Like right with with. I mean, when I look at the number of downloads I was getting then versus now, it's insane. What when was I the was, delta? Tell them. I mean, let's at be the authentic beginning, here. Be honest. Yeah, first first couple weeks, like two thousand maybe. And now? Now one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty. And but thousand. just by having two thousand, where would you rank in the top one hundred? Uh, in in the top like lo, like in the eighties or 90s, not in business but always like overall but like, or in business I just, or no, in no, fit, overall, overall and then like top wow. three in health which is right my category. so you were in the top one hundred overall with two thousand or so an episode yeah how often did you do it once a week got it where are we at now Seth we're fifty two with eighty thousand episode eighty thousand an episode how many a month five million five million yeah it's yeah. like wow. it's, yeah, yeah. That's what changes. So to this, to now, like once in a while, I'll pop into the top 100, but it's yeah. so much harder. And, oh, and yeah. when I look at the downloads, like it's much more competitive. Mm-hmm. It's cool to have a podcast. Everyone's doing it. Had I started now, <laughs> you just, I, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened that. Do way. you believe that you're, you know, obviously wrote a book and all this stuff, but you didn't yeah. believe the podcast was the quintessential moment that kind of changed your elevation of your brand? Yes, but not. An, I mean, it took time. You know? I get, it was well, a slow course. build, but it yeah. was that. But that's uh, listen, the, that's everything's the, a slow it's build. It's the tip of the spear of everything that I do. Yeah, now, and for so sure. listen. The reason I asked that and why I made a point. You, I always talk about underpriced attention. In 2012, the podcast was underpriced attention. He went and land grabbed. To his point, it didn't take a whole lot for him to be the leader there. And this is why I care about an Alexa skill for so, so many of you listening. Like, like I've got Rich. You should, actually, if you're in town, you should come to VoiceCon. We're doing a really interesting conference on May 22nd yeah, yeah. in New York. Uh-huh. I don't know if you're around, but for everybody listening, you need to come to this because this is what I, th- if you ask me, hey Gary, 
I'm like the three of us, right? Personality, wanna build stuff. Like what can I do? Everyone's like, how do I speed it up? How do I take a shortcut? There is no shortcut. Even you said right away, hey, before, before anything else, it took a long time. But the only prayer to have a shortcut by human standards is to win on the newest platform that's about to become the platform. And your Alexa skill every morning around meditation, health, vegan, life, vegan tip. If there was a rich, if there was a roll tip of the day that was the dominant Alexa skill three years from now, when she was three weeks in, you would have already been known. Skills mm-hmm. can help you do lots of things. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, stop. You, you know, and so, so that's the little thing for that. That's why I'm passionate about that. So that was it for you. How about for you? What was the question again? <laughs> what was the plat? Was Instagram the platform you popped on? I mean, yeah, I see you there. Are yeah, you are you strong in any platform besides Instagram yet? Instagram and Snapchat is popping. How many views are you getting on Snapchat? Roughly over six thousand. Good for you. Yeah. And so you're at what? Couple two, three hundred thousand on Instagram. I'm at a uh, a little over three hundred and thirty something. Something and like how that. How many <laughs> comments are you getting per post? Roughly. Mm, comments are so probably in the hun- No, it's in the thousands on some of them. And are you re- jumping in there replying to a bunch? Oh or yes, not? that's that's vital. <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't know why, but you know, a lot of people that are really popular on social media, I understand if you're like in the millions, you can't get to everybody. But so for some reason, I have found out through com- conversing with other people that are popular on social media, they don't like to talk back to their followers, and I'm like, you're crazy. Like, I agree. It, my followers, that's, letter, that's letter, what makes that orange, the brand. That orange book right there, yeah. which is my second book after me establishing what it all is, yeah. is still the reason I think I ma- like, I'm so, I mean, I'm running an 800% $200 million company. I'm like, I'm as busy, I, there's nobody, I mean, I feel real good where I sit in the I'm busy category. I'm programmed <laughs> from 6 a.m. to, to 11 p.m. Yeah. Gabe, watch this. Gabe's running probably the division I'm most excited about in the whole company. Gabe, how many minutes have we spent together in the last six months? Yeah, uh, <laughs> very, very few. Go ahead, play, take a guess, I don't fucking know. What do you think? Less than two hours. I mean, like, what the fuck? Like, your whole life is being an influencer and you don't have time to fucking answer comments? No. I do? Like, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, no, I actually feel slightly insulted if I actually slide in somebody's DM that's lower than mine, if, like on some business stuff, or... And they don't I, reply. And they don't reply, and you're I'm like, like you've got to be loser. kidding me. I'm like, I have, like, I'm not, like, in the millions, but, right. you know, it's only a matter of time. And you got me, and, uh, and we're doing it, right? Yeah, like, and I was like, that's You know what's funny? Ridiculous. Somebody said something to me at Cannes. I was at Cannes, the advertising festival last year. Uh, Cheddar, John Steinberg's got a business kind of CNBC of the future show and I went to do like 15 minutes with him and it's hard to get around can you gotta walk traffic it's just whatever I get there right on time and he goes and he just looks at me goes fuck and I go what he goes you know we've programmed like 15 people today and he goes the three biggest people are you Mark Cuban and Martin Sorrell who owns WPP the biggest advertising agency in the world and he goes you three have all been on time he goes, the other 12 fuckers are like the VP of Google Ads or like the, <laughs> you know, the VP of like future Twitter activities. And he's like, and these fuckers are 30 minutes late and think they're somebody. Yeah. And it really struck with me. Like it really has struck with me. Yeah. It's interesting. That's where you're going with that. And it's like, it's how I sniff out winners and losers real fast. Yeah. Real fast. Yeah. The number one tell for me of a loser is the second I meet you in the first hour, if I ever have, like when I say a loser, I mean somebody that's actually winning, but deep down I know they have no shot long term, is if I break bread like this, or we have dinner, when I met Rich, I remember this very vividly, if you complain in the first hour I meet you, you're finished. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think complaining is the tell. Mm-hmm. And, and if you ask me right now what's going on with my content, there's a really interesting vibe going on because it must be the cadence of our content. I'm getting so much content from people that are happy out of depression right now mm. and I cannot tell you how many of them are completely predicated on the fact that they don't make excuses anymore and they've taken 100% accountability. I genuinely think it's the unlock of happiness. When you think it's all your fault, what you realize is that nobody's in control and all of a sudden you get happy. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's super interesting. Mm-hmm. Sure. Anyway, Gabe, what's yeah. going on with, you know, 
We live public lives. Yeah. You don't. Yep. <laughs> so you're the normal. You're the normal. The normal here. Yeah. On the normal front, yeah. where are you right now with social media? What's your favorite platform? Are you using anything? Yeah. What is your relationship? What do you? What's what's in? You know these magazines: the in, the out, the hot, yep. the cold. Yep. What's the hot? What's the cold? Who's in the last six months grown with your a time and yeah, attention yeah, yeah. and usage? And what have you fallen off on for <clears throat> Gabe personally? Yeah, for me personally, uh, I probably. Straddle between Snapchat and Instagram. Those are your two uh, spots. Those, those are my two spots. I spend almost. What's the third, if at all? M- medium. Medium. Yeah. Because you read. I read. Okay. I'm uh, an aggressive reader. Where is Twitter? Hardly at all. How anymore. often will you open your Twitter app? Once every. <laughs> Once every couple weeks. Wow. T- wow. Twitter's respect. gotten toxic. Twitter's gotten real toxic. Respect, and that, respect, that's, respect. Yeah, that's why. Uh, how often, YouTube, how often <clears throat> will you open YouTube to consume content? Uh, so I've got a smart TV at home. I actually jump on YouTube uh, that, way. that way. The new way. The yeah, I don't want, I, so like we, TV. We're unplugged, we don't have cable anymore. Of course, uh, we, who has cable? Yeah, I, yeah we, we, cable? we do everything through YouTube. <laughs> Fuck a cable. Yeah, yeah. Our, our smart TV, all yeah. of our subscriptions. Uh, so. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's Insta and Snap. Insta and Snap. Uh, I'm. I hardly ever check in on Facebook anymore. And what's happening with Snap for you? That's um, intimate. Snap is one-on-one? just fun. One on one. Yeah, yeah I, like it's jokes, just fun. Da, da, da. Yeah, jokes. How many, or, how many are your core people that you talk with? I've probably got twelve people. Core, pretty consistent. And are you going to discover yeah. and looking at any of that content? Hardly ever. Got it. So it's. Yeah. Are you are you consuming people's stories? I am. Yes. Yep. Insta. Uh, Insta is. I th- I just enjoy. I think, a lo- I think a lot of my Facebook friends, I don't check on Facebook anymore, but a lot of my Facebook friends are there. Yeah. So I can just catch up on and their And outside lives your friends, what do you follow on Insta? Influencers, uh, so, media companies? So I'm like doing gymnastic strength training these days. So I follow a lot of the yep. you know older gymnasts and their couple, stuff. Couple booty girls. So <clears throat> yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> just from, from, my, from, from my 20s. It, yeah. From my 20s. <laughs> yeah, right. The old days. <laughs> yeah, the old days. Yeah, hard to unfollow. Yeah, it's, hard, it's, very, it's hard to hit that button. <laughs> Uh, what about media site? Will you follow an MBA or a CNN or anything? Uh, like Fox no, or, I mean no, like, no, like nah, What good. about me? Do you follow me? Of course. Okay. Yeah, I watch the show every day. <laughs> okay, good. Rich, Rich, yeah, yeah. Rich. Uh, what about you with social media? You're, you're coming from a different perspective. Yeah. How I'm, much? Actually, let's start with this. The breakdown between a business perspective and it's just really rich. Have you never had this life? Mm-hmm. The old lawyer, Rich. What's your breakdown on percentages of? The public versus you actually using it as a private vehicle in any shape or form, what's the breakdown? Yeah, well, I'm sharing on on most of them except for Snapchat now. Uh, I, I'm still romantic about Twitter. Oh, real quick, Twitter. real quick. Out of 100 <laughs> points, when you use all these platforms, is it 100% the professional version of yourself? Do you have any no. actual human interaction, like your normal self? Like I don't. So right. I do not use any social media like a normal person. I started it as business. It, I never grew up with it as social. Like my text, my texting is my only human place. I don't mm-hmm. hit up the, my friends on social. I don't follow them on social. I don't have a real life with social media. It's always been business. It's always been Gary V. That's always been the way it was. So I don't even know the alternative. Do you have a normal life on Facebook or on Twitter or on Snap, like Gabe does. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, and for me, it's and what a little, percentage it's, is normal versus well versus business? It's difficult for me <clears throat> to differentiate between the two because Understood. my personal life is so blended with my professional life. Mine is well-ish, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, I like, know what you mean. I know like, what you mean. Do you so, have an interaction with somebody that is not for public domain? Of course. Right? Like, of hey, course. I'll pick up the kids at four thirty, or <sighs> did you see the game tonight? Because the only place I'll do that is text. I'll do that. Uh, no normal. I'll do company. that. On, I'll do that on Twitter. Understood. I'll do that on Twitter, and I'll, and I'll do that on Instagram with just DM. daily life stories, and then I'll communicate with friends on DM. Yeah. Also yeah. on Instagram and Twitter. And so, what's emerging for you? What's declining? Well, Insta- hot, cold. Instagram is where hot. I get very hot. That's where I get the what's highest cold in, engagement. Six months ago. Um, cold is Twitter, although it's still my favorite because I'm romantic <laughs> yeah. about it. You know, I, it's still what I go to first, even yeah, though I get the least amount of engagement there, and I love it. And you know, I follow news and stuff like Understood. that there as well. Arabella? what was the question again? <laughs> I get so deep right, into the conversations. Right. Yeah, I'm like, good. okay, what? Hot cold. Hot is for hottest for me is definitely Instagram. Yep. Second hottest would be Snapchat. Coldest is probably. YouTube, you're just not paying attention. No, no, I'm when you, when you say hot as uh-huh. as I'm on YouTube as in looking, I'm on it every day. But as far as uploading content, Understood. that's what I'm not doing. Understood. Yes. 
Gabe, who's the most interesting person out there to you right now? Macro, macro conversation. Macro? Like, per, like who's the most interesting person right now? And it could be one of these gymnasts if you're yeah, into yeah. it. Like, who's super, like, who are you like, really like, oh shit, I just discovered this person. I like what they're doing or I'm learning from them or I like the way they're doing it. You just probably could be Will mm-hmm. again, Rich. But yeah. Uh, I mean, I really like Aubrey Marcus right now, CEO of On It. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's he's got uh, he's got his new book coming out. Do you know? Do you know that we have a real, real, real relationship? Yeah. Is that how you first discovered him, or you knew him before? I that? knew him from the On It days, the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, back in those mm-hmm. days, five, six years ago. So you're uh, you're about him. I, yeah, I mean, well, like I like I'm in that. Yep. I'm in that demo. I totally understand. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rich, besides Will, anybody mm-hmm. else, or is 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 it Will? Uh, I mean, Will's probably at the top right now, front of mind. But you know, I, I, I follow all different kinds of accounts. I like Street Art Globe. Mm-hmm. I think you know, I'm into art, and I think what's going on with that excited. account is super creative. Yeah, <laughs> so that excited. comes to mind. Arabella, honestly, I, I look at your stuff a lot. When did you first discover my stuff? Like two years ago. Oh, really? It's funny how <laughs> I'm all big about you know the universe like wants to get yes. Yeah, so like, I'm gonna meet this guy. I, I yeah, I, I had that you. in my mind. Like it do, it doesn't take a lot to manifest. I'm really big on once I want something, it's going to happen. It's only a matter of time. What do you want to happen? You want to be the biggest actress in the world? I will be the biggest, <laughs> one of the biggest actresses. And, and in how the do world. you define that? Do you define that as getting paid thirty million dollars to do a feature no, film? No, it's like I'm not talking about the money, but I'm yeah. trying to under, forget about that. For, yeah. Do, do you mean that by being the number one leading lady for yes. the biggest films in the world? Me and You'll leading, get paid $30 yes, million, by the way, I, by the way. yeah. That, Me that's what would in, 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 in a, a lot of people say that, but when it comes like you talk about doing the work all the time, they don't want to do, do the work. Do you think you can do that in New York? Do you feel you have to eventually move to LA? I don't know because I feel is like the when the when the time is right, LA will come calling for me. Do you think you'll get there before the OTT environment, the way the internet? Do, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Let's ask the roundabout question. Everybody answer this. Mm-hmm. Do, do you believe the biggest film in America, fifteen years from today, which is quite a while, but mm-hmm. not really, especially for the kids at home? It goes fast, right, Rich? Absolutely. <laughs> fifteen years from now, do you believe the biggest film? Like the Black Panther of 15 years from today, mm-hmm. do you think that is being executed in movie theaters the way they are now? And maybe the movie theaters have a little bit of a better setup and maybe the food's better, and maybe it's a little, but like a, we all go to a physical place that kind of basically looks like the theater. Gabe, you go first, 15 no, no years. No way, VR. I mean like 15 years, that's a 15. long time. Yeah, that, a, that, that basically puts us in the 2030s. I mean, yeah, there's no way we're gonna be going So your answer is no, Rich? Yeah. I think we'll still be in transition. I think there'll still be theaters there, but as the, the father, number one film, number one film, the number one film. I think we'll still be in a theater, but but that's at the, it's waning days. You know, as a father of but a, t- hold a ten year old girl, I get it, but it's going to hold on. Yeah, Black Panther 19, because there's something about the, pu- the public rolls. experience. Yeah. I think I that's it. still valid. I get it, Arabella. I believe it's in motion already mm-hmm. because films in just writing it takes sometimes years. I get it. So, but yes. do you think the number one film? Mm-hmm in 2033 mm-hmm. is being distributed on its $4.9 billion in revenue, Star Wars 70 fucking three. Distributed, no. There's probably another platform not even created yet that's gonna be distributed on. Yeah, I think my answer is a little bit closer to Rich's. Mm. I actually I actually think VR is gonna take some real time, though I think 15 starts becoming the interesting, right around the mm. interesting zone. It'll be really, I mean, the best part is we're gonna be able to watch this. This yeah. is why I love what my life's about now. man. I've been thinking a lot, I'm gonna bounce off for a second. Boy, do I wish I had the film of the first, do you know the first time I went to Twitter, so office, the whole company, there were six people in there? Uh-huh. There are more people in this room right now when I, than when I visited Twitter, how many employees that the company cool. had. You know how cool that vlog would be? It's cool. Mm. Or like when I spoke to the entire Facebook co- company, and like, like just so many cool, mo- or cool. the film would be passing on Uber twice. That'd be cool. Or like, when Boyd used to sleep in the office. <laughs> when, did, Wiz, did Wiz Khalifa ever come through? <clears throat> Mac Miller? Yeah, Mac Miller came. Just right like all those times. Ta- Nipsey, yeah. way back then. Future. 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 Titty Boy. Titty Boy. Mm-hmm. Two chains mm-hmm. now. Yeah. It's just all these moments. Or when you came to the office. Yeah. Like right now, my content in five years yeah. is gonna be able to have you say that and they're gonna edit that clip from Daily V 113 when you walked in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Super mm-hmm. rad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to films, it'll be interesting. Uh, the reason I'm asking you is, mm-hmm. I think you'll have to go to LA unless. Mm-hmm. What's really interesting is that the Hollywood of the East is clearly now Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you mm-hmm. know what's going on with the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia? Uh, I don't know what's going on. 
Marvel, a lot of uh, oh yeah, that they're uh, filming these movies now in Atlanta. Right, right. There's these studios, and I don't remember the town. They're about an hour outside of uh, Atlanta, but mm. Georgia, because of the tax benefits, <clears throat> right, is stealing and building. Yeah, I mean right. Atlanta. Tyler fucking, Perry built like that's a, exactly you know, right. Yeah, and Marvel. Yeah, I know yeah. that Marvel's doing a bunch of stuff. Right. I, I, I'm a hundred percent sure that VaynerMedia will have an office in Atlanta. Yeah, a hundred. No, 99. yeah, I it came from Atlanta. That's a hot spot, but I came up here specifically for training. I get it. Because what a lot of people don't understand is I was in Atlanta, and that's cool for like little independent artists. Not not trying to belittle anybody. No, it's but, a New York LA game. Yeah, but when it team, yeah, it's a New York LA game. That people mm-hmm. take you more and are you seriously. Getting value? Hmm? You getting value? Is it working? What do you mean? Are you learning? Has it been Oh, good? yes, yes. And I'm I, I'm actually already meeting actors that are in this area that find me on social media. Like, mm-hmm. these are real actors. Right. So, and, well, <laughs> and they're looking yeah. for real attention. Yes. And that's the game. That's the trade. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, I came up here to get that good NYC training so they mm-hmm. can say, hey, Arabella, Arabella, we see your resume and we see that I you're serious. It. So, you have training here, here, here. I have training in Atlanta. I have training in Augusta. I have training from L.A. But now I want to come to New York and say, hey, I have this on my resume. I'm a very serious actor. Here, here's everything I have. And okay. then that's when they're going to be like, okay, we know you are a lead role because you train for a lead. Your Instagram account. Yes. What was the first popping moment? What piece of content, <laughs> what collab, what happened? So you're doing your thing, honestly, you're putting out content. Yeah, honestly, I did not start taking Instagram seriously until about a year and a half ago. And what happened? Vi- I went viral about three times, World Star. Shout out to World Star. Yeah, World Star. <laughs> world, world, shout out to yeah, World Star for me too. Shout out to World Star. World, uh, world Star too. put me on the map. I'm not even going to lie. I was shocked. Um, I was actually filming two films two years ago at the same time, and then after I was done, there was nothing else lined up. So I'd hit up uh, one of these uh, comedians on Instagram, and I was like, hey, I like your work or whatever. On Instagram or on Vine at the time? No, 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 Instagram. Instagram. I was like, I like your work or whatever, and I was like, nobody knows that I'm funny. I I think I'm funny. And I was like, I like your stuff, so let's just meet up and just make some skits. And he was like, okay, cool. So we met up. Did you have any followers at that point? I had a little bit. I had like maybe like 17,000. Okay. So. I met up with him, and then I was like, okay. Can so we give we, him a shout out? Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I haven't worked with him for a while. I don't, Mr. Freeze. Okay. Mr. So Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Yes, and? Mr. Freeze. We worked together, and uh, the first video was called uh, I, want, I Want Some Dick, because uh, when they <laughs> want some dick. Yeah, I've heard of it. And, yeah and basically, um, we just put you it out there. Coming, you no, <laughs> oh, you, you should. Game. You should. So you all, you all of the coming. comedy is still on there, but when, <laughs> when we put it out there, I had no idea that it was going to go viral like it didn't even go viral it went like mega viral because oh, like it went it went uh really popular on my page and his page and then once world star got it it was like Poof. it went everywhere yeah and Good it was crazy and after that like You're the like, next wait two, a minute yeah 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 and then i was like hmm and then the next two vi- the videos went viral again um yeah and it was like every time i had made something went viral i guess because i'm Good extra but I'm, I'm just a good actress like that. Good for you. <laughs> but it was just comedy, so I didn't really take good it that you. seriously. Good for you. But once I started getting so many views, and then people started paying attention, people Should started asking DMs, me questions. Right, yeah, and right. I already had I already mm-hmm. have an entrepreneur uh, side that is very strong. I was like, hmm, There's let me here. let me start it. doing it. So what about the wigs? I know when I looked at your account, like back when I first ever hit my yeah. thing, I'm like. Like is that like what's that about? Is that like real life? Is that like Wait, part of I it? just love looking different yeah. all the time because you know I'm naturally like spacey and artsy and out there. Um, Babbitt so. is too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So like anytime I see like uh, uh, something that's like oh that's so unicorn like because everybody knows me as the original mm-hmm. unicorn because that's what I am, and uh, if I see it and I'm like that's unicorn like I have to get it. You feel like you're the original unicorn. That felt like. Paris Hilton saying that she invented the selfie and then the internet beat her up. Like I never I've, heard her say that. I feel, <laughs> when uh, I say that, yourself. when <laughs> I say that, I have confidence in myself as you know a woman being just mystical and like for something that but you, you never see before. But you no mystical woman before you. No, of course there was. Well, then you wouldn't be the original. Did you, did you bring any wigs with you? Huh? Did you bring any wigs? Any wig? Oh no, no, I didn't. No, I wanted to come natural. It's possible. Rich, what's going on with you, man? What do you wanna what do you wanna ask us? What do you wanna ask the audience? What are you up to? What are you thinking about? What's your next move? How are you thinking about things? Um, I got a couple books coming up uh, that are being released. I rewrote Finding Ultra, uh, and that's coming out this week, which is what brought me to New York. Um, and honestly, Gary, you know, I I'm just working on 
being better and better every day. Like, yeah. unlike you, I, like I've never had a viral moment, you know? <laughs> it's just been progressive, yeah. you know slow funny? growth. You know what's funny? I really haven't had a viral moment yeah. either. Believe mm-hmm. this or not, mm-hmm. I've had a lot of things do extremely, but I don't have any video on YouTube with over 10 million views. Like, you agree with me, Babin, right? I've yeah, never had, like, Rich, mm-hmm. it's really funny. Like, I don't think I've had a viral moment. Yeah. I've had a lot of good things going, and, and if it's a viral moment like World Star, like, that I've had some stuff, but like, I haven't had anything. Go get like, Andy, I wanna hear Andy's perspective on this. Like, what? Monday morning is the only one that I would, yeah, I mean, even I, in that realm, and even that's. Yeah. I mean, you graduate college, bad videos. No, there's, I've had some videos that have really, Andy's gonna be able to, Andy, Gary. have I ever gone <laughs> viral? Yes. Like, what do you consider viral? Like, what, you mean the big, like the four trillion to one in the Monday morning, like, we consider those viral? Like, what's the most viral thing that I've had happen? 30 million views, 400 trillion to one. That went 30 million? On, on, uh, that's pretty sorry. viral. Oh, that feels viral. But here's what I want to say. <laughs> Thanks, here's what I want to say. Get, get, what are you, Gary, you're 40? <laughs> Two. 42. All right. I'm 51. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm the elder yeah. statement, yeah. statesman yeah. here. Hair. I'm so and, and, but here's the thing. I know, like, I know you yeah, are. Yeah, look at this. I didn't even. But you, like, you, I liked when you went back. Yeah. And, like You were like completely like clean shave and complete yeah. clean ball. Yeah. When you brought back hair, yeah. I thought that was a good move. Really? Yeah, go ahead. totally shaved head. Not totally shaved, yeah. but I, I kept it real, real light. Real light, light. Like, and like, like right. even the, the beard, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. completely let it. No, no, he went three sixty of this. Yeah. He was clean yeah, yeah, two yeah, years ago. He was clean. Yeah, yeah. But here's my point. That was dirty. Um, I didn't even start really this journey that I'm on right now until I was older than you. Yeah, right? no, I get it. And and so for anybody who's listening or watching, tell them if Rich. you feel like it's too late, like tell it's them, fucking Rich. bullshit. Tell yeah. You know, Rich. I had a whole past life that led me to a point that created a health crisis and an existential crisis about what I was doing and some confusing years about trying to figure out like how I wanted to move forward in the world. You know, yes, as I said in Crushing It, no, like your work has been influential Thank you, brother. in not just motivating me, but providing me with tools to really assess that for myself. And Rich, on that note, but, uh, oh, I'm sorry, please finish. Yeah, let me just finish this thought, which is, you know, it's been, you know, my life is an embarrassment of riches right now, yes. but it's really a function of hard work and patience and diligence and, and being really uh, dedicated to the process and being detached from the results. Rich, is somebody, somebody that's exact, dude. It's, yeah, and. I couldn't say it better, right? Dude, it's the fucking process. Like, you will look back, when you become the biggest, when you put that fucking star in Hollywood, I promise you, when you're sitting with, you know, the grandchildren or people that look up to you, you're gonna romance about this time way more than the fucking hits. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. The process. Yeah. Is what the do you What do you drug. think back on? You don't like I've done these crazy like ultra endurance races. Out, yeah, but I don't, I don't think about crossing the finish line. I think about that day I didn't want to get out of bed. Like that's I what totally gives it meaning it. for yeah. me. Yeah. And in terms of your question of like, wh- you know, what is the question I want to ask the audience? Everything that I've been able to accomplish is a function, a direct result of investing in trying to more deeply connect with myself. So my question to the audience really is like, who are you? You know, who the fuck are you? And if you can't answer that question honestly for yourself, you can pick a goal and you can be motivated by Gary and take advantage of the tools that he puts out in the world, but you might be climbing a ladder that's leaning up against the wrong wall. So you really need to take the time to taste, step back taste, and, and really taste. get to know who you are. Taste. Like what is your I unique design? And what is taste. it that gets you out of bed and excited? And if you can be super honest about that and like crack the you know veneer of denial and 100%. all these things that hold you back, that is the path forward. But if you want to just leapfrog over that because you think that's an inconvenience, you can go. Yeah, you can chase stuff your whole life, yeah. but you're never going to be a fully integrated, authentic person, and you're yeah. never going to achieve your it's potential, and you're never going to be able to the share work. what it is that is most valuable, not to, just to yourself, but to but to whoever happens to be paying attention to whatever yeah. you're doing. Gabe, what's going on with beta? Like, uh, I feel like, sense? well, like you, we feel like, I feel, you feel like, we finally have got a grasp on this. Like, yeah. like w- this was a company that was incapable, mm. VaynerMedia was incapable of taking the $300,000 a year that tens of thousands of people want to give VaynerMedia because of me, yeah. because we were built for the Budweiser's and the Chase's uh-huh. and the biggest companies in the world. Gabe was a unique individual in the organization that was always entrepreneurial. We did publishing things together. Yeah. I felt that you were a man for the task. Yeah. I would argue the first year we were still trying to like figure it out. Yeah. Much to, it's the machine, it wasn't you. And I feel like, what has happened? I'm, this is almost like weirdly me having my own meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, 
what is that? What happened? Like, do you think six months ago or nine months? Ago? What, what, like, and what have you learned from the SMBs and the mid-market companies? Like, what's what's happening? Like, what's like what's the what's the nut that you've been able to crack as a leader of that I, department? I think um, <laughs> one. I because just... I actually think <clears throat> it's a very big. There's a. I would argue that 35% of people that are listening to this podcast right now yeah. actually want to do what you're doing, yeah. which is they want to be a service provider or an influencer for small and medium-sized businesses yeah. and, and build their business. So it's really interesting, whereas you were really like, oh shit, Gabe's funny and laughs loud, let me put him in this seat right now. Yeah. Uh, what Rich just did was brought a ton of value, reinforcing something I think that is our joint religion. I literally thought I was just talking. Mm-hmm. Um, What's interesting is I think you might be able to give an insight right now that could change somebody's life because a ton of these kids are building their own agencies or services or things of that nature. What was yeah. the nut that you cracked? Um, well, I think one is I really give a fuck about these guys and girls that are out there building companies. I've walked in their shoes. I, you do as well and you give me a lot of leeway to try to figure it out and taste and try things and experiment and be able to experiment without you know, being a, a, in fear of like, well, what's the P&L? Are we making money? Like, what's, what's happening? But really trying to figure out what do these businesses need? I've been in their shoes before. You know, how do we add a lot of value? I mean, I spend a lot of time with our team. I don't give a fuck what our SOW says. Deliver value above and scope beyond. Scope of work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, statement, oh, yeah, scope of work. Deliver value above and beyond what we're compensating. Right. Because you're always If we're getting right paid for 13 leader. hours of a creative yes. and they need a picture or video that's going to pop and we're at 19 hours, the answer is yes. Not yes. Pay do me a thousand dollars. Just fucking yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. Just deliver value. The only thing that matters is what. The, I mean, these, these people. Jobs are at stake. People's livelihoods are at stake. Like you've got to treat it seriously. So we just try to deliver a fuck ton of value. You having those two meetings, by the way, for your team today? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, done. It's fun when I break the machine. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, man. Yeah. It's, like, it's like Vayner of old days. <laughs> yeah. Just, listen, we're a big company. There's process. Process yeah. is shit. I hate process. Yeah. And so, like, sometimes when you gotta get shit done, that just like coming in and throwing a yeah. wrench into it. <laughs> big shout out to process. Um, so, so what what yeah. have you cracked? <laughs> um, we've just, so we, we were trying to fit everybody into the traditional agency model and we figured out that uh, that's not going to work. Uh, and so we started figuring out what we went to the, back to the drawing board and said, what's the 80, 20, like, what are we always doing? What do clients always need? We had a lot of great clients in the very beginning that just were like, Hey, I, I know my business, but I don't things? know marketing. Let's help people. Out yeah, there. yeah. Things like, um, we delivered, we were able to productize the uh, new web builds, especially for e-commerce companies. We were able to build marketing automation product flow so that they can connect their first party CRM data with their POS data with their Facebook or Instagram data and make sure that all those pipes are are connected and talking to one another and just put automated user flows. We haven't figured out the <clears throat> branding creative launch product yet, right? So we do we do. We have a product um, called that's Accelerator. Something I've been thinking yeah, a lot we have, about. We have a product called the like Accelerator. I have a, I have it's a, still expensive though. It's how much is it? Uh, uh, it's a six week project. It comes with video production and all the cut downs that you need for your media plan, a six week flight, uh, and then the postmortem and, and uh, executing the media plan. Um, the creative is gonna cost about 100 to 125K. So it's expensive. We're gonna cost 50K, and Got then it. the media is gonna be like another 75 to 100K. So Got it's it. still, it's, well, it's a six figure yeah. product still. Got it. But Have you it's, sold them? it's a, oh yeah. Yeah, Sun Butter originally. Well, those, shout out to Sun Butter and, and Justin. Those guys, Barnana. Shout out to Barnana and Nick right, and that right, team. Relax, relax. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> what, if you're, if yeah. you, if, if it, let's go back to the point here. If somebody's listening right now, yeah. they're starting their own agency. It's them by themselves. They're trying to get over that first hump. If they can make twenty five thousand mm. dollars, some way somehow they can take that money. Like that's their thing, and they're all kids, and they want to be do social media for the neighborhood restaurant. Like yeah. from what you've seen, because you're much closer to that, and a lot of them are playing in that five hundred dollar a month, a thousand dollars one off. But like, if you're one recommendation for the hustler out there, Karen, you know, and and Johnny yep. Magoo, I can tell like, you. Yep. what's the right thing that they Look, should try to get five thousand bucks for, or fifteen hundred bucks for? Understand, understand how paid media works, and be able to look at the analytics and help businesses scale their customers. Math. That's it's it's math. it's the math. With with the creative together. Like you've just yeah, gotta learn how those worlds work together and if you can figure that part out and actually be able to look at the data and make informed decisions and grow customers as a result, a lot of our clients, they know their business but that part, it starts getting wonky, it's weird, they're not super comfortable with it. Uh, it, it, it just can deliver so much value to, to these companies. We're gonna end with the speed round. <clears throat> Favorite color? Blue. Orange. Green. Favorite number? Seven. Four. Eight. Is four your real number, favorite number? Yeah. Like flat out? Yeah. Cool. Just one. You should start doing the four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite TV show you're watching now? Handmaid's Tale. Homeland. The Daily V. 
Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite TV yeah. show? Uh, I'm not a big TV guy. I'm on YouTube right Nothing. now. Yeah, I'm watching podcasts on YouTube. Favorite athlete of all time? Uh, uh, Kobe Bryant. Eric Hyden. Eric There's a curveball for Very you. Very good. Right? You know what I'm talking about. I do. To be real, I'm not even in sports like Ever, that. Ever. Right? <laughs> no, I'm not. Favorite Disney character? Uh, the, and or cartoon character. I'll, favorite cartoon character? Um, oh, no. The, um, oh, my gosh. Talk <laughs> it out. Talk it what out. What is her name? I can't out. even think. Okay. Uh, What's her name? Lola. Uh, the one on the, the one that has the red hair. And she, From the Lower Maid? No, 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 uh, no. That's no, Ariel. No. Ariel. No. Oh, my gosh. From Roger Rabbit. Oh, oh Jessica, Jessica Rabbit. Rabbit. Yes. Yeah. We all remembered her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's like my weird, she's like my spirit. That was the weirdest spirit. moment in my life. Listen, like, listen, she's like happening? my spirit animal. I don't even I'm know out. why I couldn't <laughs> even think of her. Something but. weird is happening. Rich, <laughs> Popeye. Oh That's yeah, the Sailor Man is yes. legit. The spinach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, brother. Uh, you said Disney. In my in my head, it went immediately to Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah, I love it, uh, guys. I really appreciate you guys being on the show. Uh, podcast listeners, I hope you enjoyed it. Voice con, I'm serious, I'm throwing a right hook at the end. I can just feel it in my bones that I'm about to embark into the next frontier of my career. It's around voice, it's podcasts, it's Alexa skills, it's all that. Uh, whether you come to the conference or not, just dig in, dig in. It's the opportunity, it's emerging, it's real as shit. All of you are gonna be using voice over texting for a ton of things that you can't even be thinking about right now. So I'm just excited about it. It's that next Friday. Having Rich here, I think, has inspired me. 2012 podcast, three fucking weeks in, top 100. Virality, people are watching. It matters. This could be your moment. A lot of fun things covered on the show. Hope you enjoyed it, Seth. Good job. We'll see you next time on Pod Sessions.